मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन एक्चुअली दिस इज अचुएशन टफ सिचुएशन फॉर मैन काइंडिंग फ्रॉम दिस सीवियर इंसिडेंट एनी वे होप यू आर वेल इन दिस क्रिटिकल सिचुएशन ऑफ मैन काइंड द इंटर वर्ल्ड इज ट्राइंग टू गेट रीड ऑफ दिस दिस पैंडेमिक इज जस्ट मेकिंग स्टेगनेंट टू द इंटर वर्ल्ड but uh, the most favorable thing is the research is the only way is the only path that can give us to get rid of this pandemic situation certainly but uh, research is now a day so as we are we are all observing that research is now a day is getting a different shape during the pandemic and it must be in the post uh, pandemic situation this program is uh, intended to hit the scope of the research uh, as well as during the pandemic and especially the post covid situation we appreciate the kind consent of all the resource person to be here to give their time valuable time we know that you are all so busy busy with your daily schedule but you have given consent on our request to enlarge the scope of uh, future research uh, when we are get rid of this pandemic certainly we will get rid from this situation and what will be the scope of the research after that one that is the main intention to focus in this entire webinar series we have three sessions and all the personals are there to uh, share their experience share the current situation i welcome all the participants throughout the world they have participated here more than 300 participants are there all over the world i success from our fraternity of this program and certainly we hope that we will get something that can be implementable in our future life from this program i hope a grand success of this program thank you thank you very much thank you very much good morning good afternoon uh, good evening everybody wherever you guys are uh, depends on your time zone uh uh my name is sarit uh, and uh, i have been working in uh, southeast asia um, region uh, especially uh, between singapore and uh, malaysia uh, for over the last 15 years and uh, mostly i have been working in the information technology in the different uh, problem areas uh, during the course of my um, work um, i felt uh, the need of doing my um, doctorate or phd so i did it from a local university in malaysia um, which is uh, university technology petronas um uh the research domain was in supply chain and uh, that gave me uh, the motivation to get into the data science or machine learning area um i covered uh, during my research i covered uh, large uh, areas of uh, statistical analysis um we all know that statistics is at the core of uh, uh, machine learning Uh, unless we know little bit of statistics uh, it is impossible to cover or understand the data mm. so that was the motivation and uh, mm, here today mm, uh, i'm going to present uh, 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 certain areas of certain applications of machine learning uh, but before that uh, i am going to go to my presentation slide and uh, going to go to the past slide in the covid 19 in last 6 months how the world has changed and uh, though mm, this is all uh, sound scary or we have seen the worst part or probably we have not seen the worst part it's yet to come but definitely this covid 19 situation has uh, thrown us a different challenge to us uh this kind of uh, risk uh, we 
we have faced uh, probably in our life in my lifetime this is the first time i am going through certain phases uh, this kind of phase uh, where i feel um, you know if if you read my slide it's kind of impacted every aspect of our human life every aspect of supply chain which is the core of our uh, you know movement in daily life uh, the availability of raw materials if if we talk, if i talk about the about the manufacturing industry or factory it has uh, even even if i talk about singapore is is a small country if i talk about singapore it's a small country it doesn't produce anything on its on its own uh, everything comes from um, different places including drinking water vegetable so it's highly dependent on uh, on a supply chain uh, process which has impacted heavily so that to mitigate that kind of risk you know we have to uh, companies or different countries they have to adapt um, a certain array of uh, strategies or series of strategies we can tell um, we do not know what you are going to do you know if if uh, this continue for a longer term but certainly we can hope for the best um, i think one of the aspect uh, what i foresee is we have to um, adopt a flexible approach where optimization is at the core so everything we do has to be optimized in a simple way giving the minimum effort extracting the maximum output which is at the core of the optimization so whether it's a supply chain whether it's a manufacturing whether it's a finance industry everywhere whether we are hiring people human resource everywhere uh, optimization is the core mantra i would say uh, so i am going to present uh, the next series of slides which is based on optimizations and how machine learning the area i am expertise in how machine learning can help uh, with the optimization uh, so here uh, i'm going to cover a uh, few these are the agendas um, if uh, you are i do not know my audience very well so um, probably this could be too simple or could be too difficult uh, 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 for for the people who are not belong to this uh, uh, optimization or linear programming or linear algebra because optimization or uh, um, linear programming which is linear programming is other name of linear optimization so unless uh, we have a certain basic fundamental knowledge of linear algebra this could be a little bit of difficult uh, if we if you know linear algebra uh, or if you are at the advanced level of linear algebra probably this could this could be too simple so um, the agenda is i'm going to present first is what is linear programming and why linear programming is uh, important uh different use cases of linear programming in our daily life then the mathematical model using linear programming which is the optimization how to build a linear programming model using python programming uh, there are different programming knowledge uh, i mean there are different programming applications can be applied so i have used python which is easy to use uh, python is called uh, comedian is kind of everything is one liner uh, so so a whole lot of uh, output can be taken by just by writing a one line code so that's why um, i have chosen python and then uh, i have uh, um, explained two use cases two business cases where uh, linear programming can be used and how we can solve uh, maximize maximization or minimization either of these two problem uh, 
so i hope uh, everybody is uh, uh, good and uh, clear now uh, i'm going to go to the second slide which is uh, linear program programming and why linear programming is important so linear programming is uh, kind of a group of techniques uh, uh, i would say group of mathematical uh, uh, programming to solve linear equations where um, we have the equalities and where we have the linear uh, where we have the equalities or where we have the inequalities so our objective is to either maximizing or minimizing the linear function we have to choose a function so through the mathematical modeling either we have to maximize or we have to minimize uh, if i put that into the context suppose uh, if i talk about a um, manufacturing industry probably everybody wants to uh, the underline is everybody wants to maximize the profit so that's the maximization minimization is suppose if i want to hire resources or hire people or if i want to um, let's say if i talk about inventory if i want to in store inventory i have to minimize the inventory so that i mean minimizing the inventory providing the maximum output so um, that's uh, the core uh, but it is important in the various fields like scientific computing economics technical sciences manufacturing transportation defense uh, energy so on and so forth uh, i have uh, in the next slide i have discussed some of the case studies so probably that will make it clear yes okay sounds good okay mm -hmm. so now um, uh, let's try to find out why linear programming is important linear programming is a fundamental optimization you know whether uh, we call it linear programming or we call it linear optimization technique so it's been used to in decades you know it's been used to, it's an, it's not a new technology i mean recent uh, addition is machine learning is trying to solve linear programming but it's been in use it's it's uh, industries are using linear programming for several years and as far as i know uh, last 50 years you know probably more than that uh, the advantage is linear programming is very fast i have written lp in short linear programming it is very fast uh, and uh, it's in a range of applications uh, where it can be used where uh, in a simple way we try to formulate uh, uh, the problem and then optimize that problem through a linear equations so whenever we have a problem in an industry everything is about business problem uh, whenever we have a business problem the first question we are going to ask uh, we it comes to our mind that whether we can solve that problem through linear equations so that's uh, the, uh, there is the importance of linear programming uh, if we cannot solve through linear equations there are different other equations available nonlinear quadratic and all those but first question we ask uh, whether uh, we ask to ourselves being uh, suppose if i am a business guy you know i am trying to solve a problem so i ask whether this problem can be solved through linear programming so uh, this is the science science of finding the best solution based on the given objective function that is 
we are trying to find a solution which is at least as good as any other possible solutions so mathematical uh, uh, when when i read these it it may sound difficult but probably when i go to the use case uh, it would be all easy so mathematical optimization problem is uh, usually expressed as we we expressed a object objective function like objective is whether we want to minimize or maximize whether we want to maximize the profit minimizing the inventory so on and so forth uh, the meaningful solution is we are going to develop a model we have to develop a model which can capture the objective of uh, you know whether we can minimize or maximize whatever the object objective function is uh, where um, we have certain constraints uh, world world is not uh, easy it is not perfect so there would be certain constraints uh, if i put that into context suppose if i go to the inventory part uh, we want to minimize the inventory with a given constraints in the sense uh, probably our uh, uh, we do not have enough uh, uh, cost to fund the inventory we do not have enough resources so those are the constraints in real life so we have to capture those constraints into when we formulate the linear equations so so um, in a algebraic model in an algebra um, uh, uh, we we normally have a set of certain variables so those are the Mm, uh, th with those variables we are going to formulate the solution of the problem and then a set of constraints like uh, what what we cannot do and then the object objective objective is whether we want to maximize or minimize which is the objective function um, as i said whether we want to maximize the total cost or minimizing the inventory now mm, mm, I want to say that in 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 recent uh, development, linear programming can solve multiple objectives. Though here um, I have shown in the use case, I have shown that um, it's a one objective uh, we are trying to solve. Just to keep it simple, so that everybody understand. But in real life scenario, uh, mostly. Um, we have uh, in a if if we are running an industry or business we have multiple problem or multiple objective we want to solve so linear programming can do that as well here uh, i all uh, request you guys to um, read through it uh, if i if i read through probably you won't be able to focus so these are the different use cases, you know, uh, depends on, I'll give you five minutes time uh, so that you can read through it. Food and agriculture industry, application in engineering industry, transportation and logistic industry, manufacturing industry, power and energy industry. how different industries are applying or can apply linear programming to optimize their business. The presentation deck would be available with uh, Aniruddha. So after this uh, session, if uh, anyone wants to go through the deck again uh, that's possible you can always ask for that so uh, some of the industries i have covered here but there are many others uh, like food and agriculture industry application in engineering engineering industry transportation and logistics efficient manufacturing 
I would call discrete manufacturing, uh, energy, power and energy industry. So it's all aviation industries, uh, even in, uh, in uh, I would say healthcare industry as well, which is uh, healthcare, financial, which are highly data sensitive and highly sensitive industry in terms of uh, if the percentage of error is even 1% or 2%, if I talk about the healthcare industry, if the percentage of error is one and two, one or two percent, probably in any other industry that is accept, acceptable, but in healthcare that could cause somebody's life. So it depends on you know, different industry. Uh, the formulation, the formula has to be devised. Okay. So here is the uh, uh, final goal, optimization problem. Uh, we, we try to seek a solution to enter, minimize or maximize obje objective function while satisfying all other constraints. So here, uh, if you see function of X, which is uh, we have to minimize or maximum max which is the which is we have to write that function uh, given the constraints if you see the formula written here um, uh, if it is too difficult for you or if uh, you are struggling to understand don't worry if i go to the next following slides or if i uh, discuss about the use cases probably it would be easy for you uh, I have a simple video here. I'm going to run this for you guys. Uh, video is for, I think, seven or 10 minutes. Uh, probably if you go through this video, uh, you will have a fair amount of idea. It's how you're learning math so last century. Now, uh, listen, listen to this carefully. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the maximum value uh, for our objective function, which is E equals. And to do that, we have a list of constraints. And we are going to want to graph those constraints, identify the feasible region, and then identify vertices, points, um, X and Y, that. Uh, Let me, uh, volume is at the top. Listen to this carefully. This is a short video. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, what I'd like to do is show you how to find the maximum value uh, for our which is P And to do that, we have a list of constraints, and we are going to want to graph those constraints, identify the feasible region, and then identify vertices, points um, X and Y that are. Uh, are constructed from the intersection of our of our lines of constraints that satisfy all of our um, satisfy all of the constraints within our feasible region. So uh, the first thing we want to do is graph our lines, and we see here we like when we have x is greater than equal to zero or y is greater than equal to zero because those are our x and our y axes. So all values that are greater than x, well that's going to be points and above, and all values that are uh, greater than y or y is greater than zero, that's gonna be points that are gonna be going to the right. X is equal to, I'm sorry, I switched those around. X is greater than equal to zero is gonna be your vertical line taking points to the right. Y is greater than equal to zero is gonna be your x axis for points that are going up because each of those axes are equal to zero when we graph them. Just like you graph x equals zero, y equals zero, but now we're just pointing the arrows um, to what's gonna make them sense. Then the next thing we need to do is now graph our other two constraint, which I have 3x plus y plus 57. So to graph this, I'm simply just going to write this in. Um, I'm simply going to write this in our slope intercept form. So here I can say my y axis is at 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then my slope is uh, negative 3, so I can rewrite that as negative 3 over 1. I'm going to want to graph this down towards my other two. Um, uh, constraints. So I'm going to go down three, two, three, one. So 
one, two, three. And then my next value here, uh, the next equation is x plus 2y plus 9. So now I'm going to graph that. I subtract x. And I have 2y plus 8 and with x plus 9. Now I've solved for y, multiplied by 3. And I get y plus 9 to 3 negative 1 half x. Plus, I could do 9 halves, or I could rewrite that as 4.5. And a lot of times I like to use decimals when graphing these I hate decimals. I like preferred to use fractions. A lot of times with graphing, you know, it's helpful to know that, oh, my y-intercept is at 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 4.5 would be right in the middle. Now I'm just going to still, from there, I'm going to go to the middle point of the next one, over 1. Middle point of the next line, over 2. Down 1. There. Middle point of the next one. Down one. Middle point of the next one. Down. Oh, over two. All right. So down one over two. One, two. Down one. Down one over two. Down one over two. Down one. Down one. Down one over two. That's far off. Um, and let's go and see. These are all x's less than or equal to this one, and this one was y is less than or equal to. So therefore, I'm dealing with these two boundary lines are going to provide me with this feasible region, which is right inside. So basically, I need to make sure I can determine what this you know, point is that they're intersecting at. And it looks like for my graph, that's at the point um, 7. So that'd be over 1, over 1, 2, 3, down 3, over 1. So that just looks like that at the point uh, 6, 5, 4, 1. So 1, comma 4. So let's just verify that's a point for uh, both of these. Negative 12, that's going to be 5, 1. Four comma four. No, one comma four. So I put in a one four. That works for that one. Yes. So to verify this point, even though like like I said, my graph is really really off right here. Um, per my graph, this point is at one comma four. Now, if I plug in a one in for x, I have negative three times one. Um, negative one. Negative. 3 times 1, which is negative 3, plus 7 is 4. And then the y-coordinate is 4. So 4 is less than or equal to 4, so it works. If I plug it in here, I plug in a 1. Negative 1 half times 1 is negative 1 half, or negative 0.5, plus 4 is 4. Again, 4 is really equal to y is 4, so then 4 is less than or equal to 4, so that point works. The next one here is my y-intercept, which is at 4.5. So I'll write 4.5 comma 0. And this next one is I'm going to be following this line here. So if I go down, down three, one, two, three, over one. Down three, one, two, three, over one. Now for the next point, I'd go down three again, one, two, three, over one. So it's between one, two, and three. So it's between two and three. Um, so the way I can identify what exactly that point is, is that point is when x is equal to 0. So I'm going to go back to this equation that produced that line, where I have the 3x plus y is less than or equal to 0. I'm going to say, all right, well, what about when my x value is, z or is equal to 7? What about, or not when 0, I'm sorry, when my y is equal to 7, or my y is equal to 0? So it'll be 3 times x plus 0 is less than or equal to 7. And then, 3x is less than or equal to 7, divide by 3, divide by 3, x is less than or equal to 7 thirds. So my x coordinate is 7 thirds, comma, 0. Oh, I wrote that. Okay, 
So now let's go ahead and determine, my apologies, take a little while, but hopefully you guys understand, you know, when you're dealing with, um, when you're dealing with fractions, a lot of times, you know, especially when you're dealing with your graph where sometimes it can be, you know, is this right or wrong? I can always determine what is that point? Well, that's the Y intercept. So I plugged Y zero in for Y into that equation of that constraint line to be able to determine what the X value was. The same thing here, you know, I was pretty sure the coordinate was one comma four, but to verify, I plugged in X and Y into both of those equations to make sure it worked. And then this one I just rewrote, should be X zero, Y four point five. So now let's go and plug them in into my objective function to obtain the maximum value. So therefore I have P equals two times one plus four. Two times one is two, two plus four is going to be six. Then I'll do zero comma 4.5. And that's going to be p is equal to 2 times 0 plus 4.5. Well, p is equal to 2 times 0 is 0, and that's 4.5. And then the last one would be 7 thirds, uh, comma 0. And that's going to be p equals 2 times 7 thirds plus 0. Well, let's just go ahead and like, take a look at this. p equals 2 times put that over a fraction, that's going to be 14 over 3 plus 0. Now, does 3 go into 14 more than 6 times? No, 3 goes into 14 only 4 times with the remainder of 2. So therefore, we can say that this is our objective point, 1 comma 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine, or it's your maximum, not your objective point, your maximum value, which would be 1 comma. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to my presentation slide. Programming to find the maximum value of the objective function is equal to 6x plus 17y subject to the constraints oh. given by the linear equality. Let me stop here. Okay. So Is my screen visible? Okay, so uh, uh, if uh, uh, some of you did not understand that um, the objective is to find out that optimal feasible region. So um, I am going to show you another let me see if I have that. Mm. I hope everybody can see my screen. Okay. If you see this plot, so this is the feasible zone we are trying to formulate. So in the video, mathematically, a simple linear algebra, we are trying to find out the max, maximum value or uh, trying to solve our objective function. Uh, that was comparatively a simple uh, solution uh, or simple problem but what happens when when we get a complex problem you know suppose if we if we are running a supply chain um, at walmart or let's say amazon uh, any of those kind of supply chain and we want to optimize the performance of the supply chain you know that's a huge complex uh, problem with uh, huge amount of data you know big data i would say but this is the concept uh, once you understand the concept probably it would be easy for you to run this in the software you know what's going on in the background so this is optimum zone we are we are trying to formulate uh, through the linear equations uh, this is the black lines are x axis and y axis and through the different plot and we find this maximum uh, or feasible zone our solution would be lying 
somewhere here. Now I'm going to go back to my slide again. So now um, I already have told you that uh, Python, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, Python. So Python is an object oriented language. If uh, some of you do not know, uh, so Python is an object oriented language. Uh, it, was, it was developed in uh, late 1980s. And uh, in the research community, and nowadays in the real life industry also using Python, but uh, it has got a lot of statistical tools uh, available, uh, especially the scientific Python. Um, so um, research community, uh, a lot of academics, a lot of universities, uh, uh, including universities of uh, Harvard, Stanford, Oxford, uh, Cambridge, uh, um, a lot of academicians are using uh, Python, Python or R language. Python is comparatively easy. So um, now the interesting part is, uh, let's look at some of the real world use case. The use case is simple use case so that everybody can understand. Uh, a factory is looking to hire more workers. Uh, the requirement is uh, they have to work for five days and two days off in a week. So objective is to hire minimum number of workers. Uh, an estimated number of workers needed for each day is given. Monday, 25 number of workers. Tuesday, 32 number of workers. Wednesday, 22 number of workers, so on and so forth. You know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So factory runs every day. So now, if I ask you what would be the minimum number of workers to hire, how do we solve this problem? This is a um, uh, probably uh, if uh, we have done linear algebra in our high school. Uh, we can solve this problem very easily you know, with the probability functions. Now, how we can utilize Python to solve this problem? Uh, here, uh, you have to understand that uh, the equation, like this equation, Monday, Tuesday, this equation is an iterative process. In the sense, we write this equation uh, for comparatively easy solutions, it's easy to write, but for complex solutions, once you can formulate this equation, then everything would be easy to run into the software. These equations we write, we do mistakes, we go to the board, whiteboard, or blackboard, whatever board, we again write the equation, again come back, again, again do. This is an iterative process, you know, back and forth, and then finally we come up with a solution. So here you see, um, P0, P is a person, person zero, person one, all these things. So um, this is how we are going to hire. Uh, I have written these equations to solve this problem. Uh, you can write this or probably later on when you see the um, formula, uh, how software is running this formula, it would be easy for you. So um, let me go back to my uh, formula code. If I open my notebook, linear programming, So this is the use case, okay? So this is the formula I have written, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to solve the problem, okay? 
uh, this formula um, now put this formula into the software this is the model we are going to initialize the model number of days are seven these are the constraints these are the constraints comes from this formula uh, this is the equation the model talks about minimize number of workers so objective is to hire minimum number of workers if i put these constraints so remember one thing in real life scenario normally we spend a lot of time to define the constraints define the constraints uh, i mean once you you identify this formula everything would be easy you, you put that into the form uh, in the software and if we solve it you see the solution says factory needs to hire 32 workers and how this is workers uh, zero zero means uh, in the software zero means one So seven number of workers on Monday, and then so on and so forth. Last day, Sunday is eight number of workers. So this is how um, uh, we are going to solve the problem using a simple problem, but using the software Python, we can solve this problem. I'm going to use uh, or, or talk about another use case. Here you come. This use case is about a bakery which makes cakes and pastries or pies every month. So if you read this, there is one oven, two bakers, and one packaging unit. So this works 22 days of the month. So for a small industry, uh, I would say it is a, you know, probably you are doing it from home. So cottage industry. So the cake requirement requires the oven for one day and the pie requires the oven for half a day. So there is only one oven. Each baker needs to work for cake half day and pie for two days and the packers need to work for the cake for one day, you have to pack it, and the pie for half a day. Now the profit on each cake is $15, and the profit on each pie is $12. The question is, the problem is, how many should be made to maximize the profit under the given conditions? So you, you want to formulate, you know, final objective is you want to maximize your profit. So how many cakes or pies you want to make? So this is also comparatively a very, very easy uh, problem uh, where the solution would be um, comparatively easy when you write the formula, but you can correlate that I mean, correlate this kind of problem with a real life. These are all real life problem, but you can correlate that into the difficult, uh, you know, big industries uh, where multiple stakeholders and people and multiple uh, lines of uh, production units, inventory, all these things are on, uh, assembly line. So there would be multiple problems. So here, Again, I have uh, these, these are the constraints. Constraints are defined from here. These are the constraints. These, these things are constraints. So I have formulated these things. And when uh, I run these, you see, 
bakery needs to produce 456 number of cakes per month to maximize the profit. So uh, these are all comparatively easy. I'm going to go back to my mm, mm, presentation. So these are comparatively easy solutions uh, uh, to give. Now you you can uh, correlate this problem, as I said, in your real life scenario or real business scenario, and then come out with a lot of other solutions. But that's the optimization I'm talking about, uh, which requires in today's environment, you know, we do not have the luxury to uh, you know, work in an unorganized, in an unorganized fashion, where we have no idea how many we are producing and how many people are working and what kind of profit we are making. So that's what probably um, uh, the last line, our current, business scenario or current situation uh, has thrown us this kind of challenge you know, everybody every one of us have to use the optimum optimal numbers in every aspects whether you are talking about money with a spending with a study or any other aspect you know finance aviation industry which is the biggest hit tourism industry probably the biggest hit so here we are. So this comes to the end of our um, session. If you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Or um, I will put it in other way. If you cannot remember any questions now, or it doesn't come to your mind now, probably you note it down, and uh, you can uh, send it to Aniruddha. Um, I will I will reply back each and everybody's questions. And also, um, if you want to go through the slides and go through the solutions once again uh, on the couple of case studies. Uh, Okay, I have got uh, uh, some messages. I think Aniruddha, you also have got some messages. You can see. Yes. Yeah. I can show multi-objective optimizations, but I, I'm not too sure whether time permits. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me show if I can find out some multi-objective uh, optimization. Okay, uh, is is my screen visible? This one. Okay, this is a this is a multiple uh, objective in the sense two objectives are there. Um, this is also I would say um, it's not that complicated. There could be more, many more. You know, you can you can have five or six objectives uh, trying to solve. Uh, I think uh, who did ask that question? Uh, do you remember the name? Or, sorry, I forgot the name. Anyway, whoever asked that question uh, uh, to you, Subhadeep. Okay, Subhadeep, this is for you and uh, for the others who are interested. Uh, the problem is uh, a small car manufacturing company uh, produce two kinds of models, car models. 
let's say model A and model B. Uh, this is a small car and uh, long term projections indicate expected demand of at least 100 numbers of model A cars and 80 numbers of model B cars each day. So now the constraints, limitation, constraints are limitations. Limitations is the production capacity. No more than 200 Model A cars or 170 Model B cars can be made daily. So the uh, manufacturing company cannot produce more than 200 Model A cars and uh, 170 Model B cars every day. To satisfy the transportation contract, uh, contract I mean, when you manufacture, you have to transport those cars to the different distributors, dealers, and all those. You, you are not going to keep those cars in your industry, in your manufacturing unit. So there is a transportation contract. Uh, the, the transportation contract is at least 200 cars um, must be transported. It's a spelling mistake or writing mistake. It must be transported each day. So if each model A cars sold, uh, if you sell model A cars, you lose $2,000 less, a loss. You make $2,000 loss. But model B car produce $5,000 profit. OK? So how many each type of car? should be made daily to maximize the net profit. When you sell model A car, you make $2,000 loss. But when you make, uh, when you sell model B cars, you make uh, $5,000 profit. So combination of these is you, you make some money. You, you lose one and you make, you gain in another. And combining these, you probably make uh, money. So now you have to optimize this. How you are going to optimize this? Now here, uh, objective is how many cars you are going to make each and every uh, each of these model, and what is the profit? So two objectives. You are going to to find out how many, what is the number of cars you, sh you should make in a day. And second is how much you are going to make. What is the money you are going to make? So that's why it's, I'll call uh, multi objective, two objectives. So here again, LP is linear programming. So variables A, Lower bound is 100, upper bound is 200. I picked up model A, upper bound is 200. I put this, all these in the constant, 80 and 170. In the sense, uh, A car is, uh, you know, at least one, model A 100 numbers, a maximum 200 number of cars you can make a day. This is, Minimum 80, maximum 170 cars you can make a day. This is the profit. And these are the constraints. So uh, if you, it's, it's going to take some time for you to, you know, figure it out, you know, when you, when you start writing in the whiteboard or on your scribbling pad, it's going to take some time to you know, figure out uh, the constraints. You know, you have to, as, as I said, it's an iterative process. You have to do it, you make mistakes. Again, you have to erase it and redo it. And here, if I solve it, I see here is the solutions. Number of Model A cars, 100 numbers of Model A cars, and 170 numbers of Model B cars we can produce in a day, which would give the maximum profit of $650,000.
this is how we solve uh, multi objective problem using linear programming or linear optimization or mathematical modeling uh, if you want to uh, i call it as a, as a sanity check suppose you want to check whether your solution is perfect or not so then you want to do the linear algebra do this graph plot and then you solve this and then you see you come to the last line it's exactly the same 60 650000 dollar profit with 100 numbers of acres and 170 numbers of beakers so um, this is how you do it you know you you don't uh, end up uh, over here when you find the optimal solutions how do you know this is the optimal solutions do you have a sanity check no this is called the testing this is how you test so uh, um, in this kind of conversation presentations probably this is what i can show but if you um, if you practice this in 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 a in a piece of paper or through mathematical solution it would be it would be clear to you and you if you if you want to um, really want to go through this i have several technical blogs uh, uh, written over here you can go you can go here and check several of my technical blogs this is the deterministic modeling now here also there could be probability using the probability theorem you can use the probability modeling probability of failure let's say if you want to predict the probability of failure uh, mm, mm, it's it's like you are using some machines or some components which uh, for sure you know components are going to fail at uh, some day it's like aircraft engine you know if you're working in a aircraft manufacturing company your aircraft engine or um, or your railway engine is going to fail someday so now you are going to calculate what's the probability of failure you know when exactly a likelihood when when it is going to fail the likelihood range within this range you know it's going to fail so it's going to go for the overhauling before even you reach that age uh, you you do the overfall overhauling so that that would be the probability modeling these are all deterministic modeling and you have, you have to determine you know what is the optimization or maximization and all and there are several other uh, um, blogs are written uh, which are advanced level advanced learning prediction modeling etc but let's focus on uh, one at a time optimization linear optimization which is the agenda of our today's discussion aniruddha over to you Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Sir, I have one question. In case of your multi-objective functions, we have used uh, several functions. Say, capital F is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3, and we use generally some weighted factor related to optimization method. Is there any strategy to choose those weighted factor, or randomly we choose from our experience? Uh, no, you can uh, see there are there are different ways of doing it. Um, uh, from from your experience uh, uh, you can you can choose whatever the strategy because every business uh, you whatever business you are trying to solve you you have to have a domain expertise if if you are if your expertise in the business domain probably you can figure it out what would be the weighted factor uh, if not then um, you can define you can define some strategy and then work on that 
So who, which kind of business is, what, what is the business? If I ask you so. Sir, it is a, say your optimizations uh, the, or say minimizations of the total cost generations of uh, uh, thermal power plants and in collaborated with your hydral plants. Uh, that is my objective. Then uh, the hydral generation cost is something else and your thermal generation cost is something else and they also collaborate with the, some renewable energy also incorporated with that. So okay. I have to use some multiple factor or weighted factor of each of these costs. Uh, so mm -hmm. sometime I found find out that the 1000 is give you the per better result rather than the some other uh, the, that the convergence of nature is uh, completely a difference sometimes. And sometimes it will take a longer time to get the uh, pseudo optimable point. So, so, so sometimes getting confused uh, how to choose that weighted factor. Okay, uh, I am not uh, expertise in uh, thermal or that kind of business domain, but the weighted factor, uh, I guess you can, you can uh, through, through linear algebra, you can figure it out. Through linear equations, you can uh, define the weighted factor and uh, you can put that. So depends on one, one is from your experience uh, or expertise from the business domain, you can do that. And one is uh, from the linear equations, if you define the weighted factor, uh, you, 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 do, you do that and then you compare which gives the best output. Uh, if, if you really want to know, I can uh, send you the formulation for the weighted factor on the, on, uh, using the linear equation. That would be very much helpful, sir. Okay, done. I'll I'll work it out Thank and you. then uh, mm, mm, try to send you through Aniruddha. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Silence is no good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, it was pleasure talking to everyone, every one of you. So, uh, any any problem or any anything related to this session, you can uh, write to me offline. Uh, my coordinates are uh, available with Aniruddha. Thank you, guys. It's 2.30 here, yeah.
Bye-bye.